On the barbell, I am your host Modingo, and with in me in front of me with no beverage, I got water. Okay, you got water. That's lame. Is Brody or or uh, Brobility? <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> Brobility here. No, <laughs> you know, just uh, wrapped up another episode, hitting another one. As you hear the sound of freedom in the background, listen to that. Go get, go get ISIS, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's earlier in the day. I really, really would love a beer right now. But we have workouts to do here shortly. So Workouts to do and compete this weekend. So oh, What are you competing in this weekend? Long roads thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have two teams that are going there. and then Long uh, Road CrossFit, they're located in Urbana. Urbana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably about 45-ish Ish, minutes, yeah, hour like that. away from here. Yeah. Yep. So getting ready for that. And this our, it'll be our fourth competition in fifth, five weeks. Yeah. No time. So, no rest for the wicked. Bro, gains, baby. <laughs> it's all about gains. So keep using that hashtag OMR fam, also Brody's favorite, hashtag world domination. Hey, you got to get traction, man. As we are on the way to 10K, we're going to get there with you guys and your help. Absolutely. Keep sharing it. Keep sharing it, please. And also, uh, we really dig what you guys did sharing your favorite episode with uh, your friends and family members that aren't necessarily subscribers just yet, but maybe they will be. And I think one of the things that bro and I talk about that we really enjoy about the show is we don't always talk about fitness. We talk about things that you can use in life. When we talk about the mentality episode, we talk about visualization. You can use those things. The last one we just did. Or even the, yeah. And even with the PT stuff, you know, just because you're not a CrossFit athlete doesn't mean you can't benefit from some of the stuff we, we, uh, we offer here on the show. So that's something I really take pleasure in uh, with what we have here. Yeah. I mean, we basically do TED Talks now. So yeah, we're basically uh, in self-help now. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, our portfolio is filling up, baby. <laughs> we're getting broad. So continuing with the theme of last week, we're going to throw our call to action up front here in the beginning. And what we would like you to do is send us a video clip of show ideas that you would like us to pursue in the future, whether it be on Instagram or on Facebook, or you can even DM us, you know, if you're not cool putting it out there and in the public, and that's fine as well. Yeah, uh, we, a lot of our topics came from you guys. I'd say 90% of our topics came from you guys. Which is cool. Because we still have that list (laughs) that we really haven't dug into. Yeah, (laughs) And uh, I think it's just when you guys give us things to talk about, it opens our minds to different avenues. Absolutely. Of things to actually talk about that we probably overlooked, um, not on purpose, but just because we our our minds weren't going in that direction. Mm -hmm. So sort of like this podcast, Mo's, Mo's Direction. So a little bit different than bro's direction. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting there And together. here we are, baby. Yeah. We're, we're hitting back-to-back-to-back to back to back sometimes episodes. <laughs> Look at that, man. Yeah. Hey, how many more we got to... Um, a whole lot. What do you say? We had to record for like... It's a long 300, time. 500 days straight well, or something. I, I did the math, and I think my math was off. I think we had to do it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Eight hours a day for like three years. But you're about to retire, so we'll definitely have that opportunity. <laughs> I'm transitioning. I'm transitioning oh, yeah. from the military. This episode of the One More Rep podcast is being brought to you by 7.5 Clothing, making badass gear for your badass ventures. Now, bro was kind enough to give me some gear right after my retirement that uh, Wally had sent us. So Yeah, I passed it on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make the shirt. I finally had an opportunity to wear it. And um, I'm kind of a bigger dude that you guys have seen me. I'm a full-figured man. <laughs> and uh, no, I actually like the way it fits. Uh, the, the material is the first thing that I really noticed is that it's nice. It's not all itchy. It's not you know, like a, like a hundred percent wool cotton blend. <laughs> That's bad for CrossFit. <laughs> That's bad for CrossFit. Bad they, for laundry. Yeah. yeah. They, if it was full cotton, Mo, <laughs> people would die. <laughs> they would die. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if, if you were in like a super humid climate, like Florida rock and something like that. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be like wearing a weight vest to do Murph. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How are you do that? All the, all the sweat. I mean, but I'm saying all oh, the sweat would be kicked yeah. onto your shirt, weighing you down. That's a good point because I didn't think about that. People who, what size is that? It's XL. Okay, so XL and 2XL, people think that um, because they're form fitting, that it's going to like make you look like a smedium. Like, right. Look and, like the, and it uh, doesn't. like, uh, what's the Pillsbury Doughboy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it, because, yeah, and I'm not someone who usually wears form fitting, but I mean, I'm a little chubby right now because I, 
you know, you're retired. enjoying retirement life. But no, I don't feel like I look morbidly obese in this thing, and it it fits nice. I'm not a guy who likes to wear tight clothing, except for that Under Armour back in the day. Well, yeah, of course, everybody <laughs> did that. <laughs> the extra medium, the extra medium when you're deployed. <laughs> Deployment swole. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, like it, uh, it, it just it feels good. It, uh, it looks appropriate for me, uh, and I like I'm pretty self conscious, so I don't like to look a certain way, and uh, can't wait to work out in it. Actually, so I'm just kind of give you. Yeah, I'm afraid to work out in it. Yeah, I want to. I, I do. I, I want to, but I don't want to. But right. I think we owe it to to Wally to work out in it and give some feedback on that as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that um, another thing I, I was just looking at most shirt. I just I like the simplicity of some of the stuff. Like mm-hmm. that's his brand, that's their brand. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times he's you know, we can, like I said, we can go affliction. Affliction style, yeah. yeah. If Wally starts putting oh, wait, like bedazzling what, his, his what was, shirts. What was the other Ed Hardy? Yeah, Ed, <laughs> <laughs> with Wally, the unicorns and tigers yeah. on them and stuff. Wally, don't be bedazzling your shirts. No, and, yeah, please don't do that. Wally. Yeah, and gl- no glitter. <laughs> Mo 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 I like glitter. <laughs> Maybe that might be like my Friday evening shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my post wad shirt. That's, no, that's your DJ shirt. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. You can have his little <laughs> <laughs> Mo with glitter on the back. <laughs> Dingo with the, there you go. the with jewel. rhinestones. Yeah. yeah. The rhinestones. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, stuff's legit. I really like it. Uh, I'm probably going to need to buy some shorts from there too because he's, ev- he's got everything top to bottom hats, um, koozies. shirts, koozies, yeah, seen it all. patches. Um, I didn't see a patch. Knee, knee sleeves. You got patches? Yeah. What's up, Wally? <laughs> Especially knowing I'm military, man. Come on. Yeah, I'm not military. What's up? <laughs> but seriously, check it out. If you log in now and you give them your email, you'll get a 15% off off your purchase. So That's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. Glad, glad, glad we joined forces with them. All right. So this episode in particular is one that bro and I kind of came up with after Out of most fru- Mo had a frustration. It, actually, yeah, Mo was Mo frustrated. Had, Mo, Mo was, was frustrated. frustrated. And he came at me hot, and then we started breaking down the numbers, and we actually developed yeah. the entire episode about and, and, it. And my mind was absolutely blown after we started doing some math. So I'll tell you my story. Uh, I had got done coaching the day prior, and we were doing um, an overload cycle or, or, or overreaching cycle. At, um, at my gym, AKP CrossFit. And basically what that means is you start off, well, the way we have ours set up for most of the time, it's start off at 90%, then go to 95, then 100 on your third set. Your fourth set should be trying to attempt a new PR. And then on that fifth set, it should be beyond that uh, new PR. In theory, you should be failing because more than anything more than 100% is you, you shouldn't be doing unless you have bad numbers or you're underloading your bar. So I was telling bro how frustrated I was getting when all my athletes at the end of the strength portion were finishing all the reps in, in set five. And I'm like, come on, guys. This is not how it's intended to work. You know, maybe some days you're having an awesome day or you, ha- or you, missed, some, you missed some workouts before and you hadn't anything logged. But when everybody in my class is finishing all the reps in the last set, that's not, that's not right. It, that's not how it's intended to be. And I was just getting frustrated and I was venting to bro. Well, back it up. So – to clear it up, the intention is to finish all your reps into a certain point, and mm-hmm. then when you reach failure, yes, that's you fail. You lift. fail. Yep. And his athletes weren't pushing that that failure, threshold. That threshold of yeah. where the system was supposed to. Um, I'm going to guess overloading is like when you overload your central nervous system. It has a, an effect where the following time that you can lift more weight. It's, mm-hmm. We do CNS loading a lot here. But they weren't actually trying to fail. They were ignoring that yes, part for of the these. sake of completing whatever prescribed number of reps. And why did they do that? Because psychologically, CrossFitters, we don't want to fail. Right. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. So I think today's title is, uh, what, do we, what do we say? It's just five pounds. It's just five pounds. Right. Okay. So we're going to use this, this whole five pounds as an example of, of what five pounds will do to you over... What do we come up with? A eight week training cycle? Just like it, just a just few, a training just, cycle. Yeah, just three weeks. Yeah, but yeah, we, yeah, we didn't even finish the yeah, entire training day. cycle. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Mo was telling me this, and it's very rarely Mo gets frustrated. <laughs> Usually, I'm the one like <laughs> frustrated as hell. He's trying to talk me off the cliff because I'm about to get an AK-47 and just start <laughs> owning people. And while, uh, while he's eating Reese's cups, <laughs> I love Reese's cups. <laughs> And I would do. I would smash a uh, DQ Blizzard right now. Recent Blizzard. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And um, 
So he was telling me this, and I'll tell you, I had the same frustrations on the, another side of it is, let's say uh, my athletes were in our max out week, which we are. We're in our uh, first set of our max out week. We do it over two-week period now because um, it works better for us. But the uh, I hate when people will say, they'll stand up their lift and they PR, and then the next thing I say, that's awesome, dude, way to go, or hey, mm. congrats, and they're like, it's just five pounds. <laughs> and, uh, if you can see my body language right now, like, <laughs> total diva. And uh, I don't even, okay, this goes back to the whole crap, like. It's all about you. I was proud of my, yeah. I was proud of my lawn. <laughs> I was proud of I was proud of doing something that I used to hate. Yeah. And someone has the nerve to talk smack about it. This person just put in work for eight weeks, mm -hmm. has a five pound PR, mm -hmm. and I say, Congratulations, way to go. That's awesome. You've been killing it. And they say it was just five pounds. I'm like, and you're just an idiot. <laughs> Celebrate that. Five pound a pound is a pound. I don't care. You lifted more than you did the last time you did this. That is a victory. And Celebrate that. Why it's annoying is a couple aspects. One is what Mo's kind of hinting at, and I yeah. am like, be proud of what you do. Absolutely. You put in work. You accomplish something. You didn't fall 10 pounds under your max. Agree. Okay? There you go. You went five pounds above your max. And let's say you go up to another five pounds. You missed your 10-pound PR. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. It happens. And uh, so you hit your five-pounder. You, you put in a lot of work, you really made it a focus, and now you're not happy because, with your result. Yeah. But you'd have been even unhappy if you didn't achieve a five pound PR. So I'm going to ask you this. If you were five pounds under your old PR, were you like my upset. grandma? Were you, <laughs> were you always just unhappy? Yeah. Like, what is it? You, you're unhappy if you don't, and you're unhappy if, if you, you do. do. Yeah. Well, would you, been, would you have been happy with a 15 pound PR? Or yeah. would you have been pissed that you didn't get a 20? Uh, uh, yeah. Exactly. When does it end? It's a, it's a, one of those vicious cycles like when are you going to be happy with what you've done, mm -hmm. with the work that you've put in, mm -hmm. and then the and reap the benefits of all your all your, all labor. your hard work. Yeah. yeah. And that's one side of it. Yeah. And Here's the other side. Yeah, but but finishing that piece off, guys, a PR is a PR. I don't care if it's a pound. I don't care if it's a half a pound. You, you, you celebrate your work. You earned it. And as I always do, I keep stuff going. <laughs> <laughs> and another aspect of that is remember when we're maxing out, we're asking you on one specific day to hit your PR lift. Mm -hmm. We're not taking into factor nutrition, sleep, uh, food, or yeah, nutrition, food, sleep. Um, your mental status, your too. Your mental status. Yeah. Just, did you have a, a, a weird day? Were you mentally drained? Um, it's even though we want to be fully prepared for our max out day. Oftentimes, life, you know, our transition to the gym yes. will screw up how we feel going into the gym. You could be yeah. more run down. It just could have been one of those beat down days mentally and maybe some physically. And then we were asking you to come in and PR. And let's say you still hit a five pounder and you're unhappy. Like, dude, you were limping in here because you're like so tired. Mm -hmm. You've been sitting at your desk you're, all day. Yeah, yeah you're, you do the warm up and, and get ready. And you just, you tell me you weren't feeling it. And then you hit a five pounder and you're still unhappy. Like mm -hmm. you should be, that should be like a 50 pound PR, right? Yeah, exactly. And like I say, the, to me, my, for my athletes, I always tell them when they're rivaling in the middle of a workout or a strength, getting here was the hard part. You're yeah. here, do the work. So the other aspect of this is kind of where we go off on our tangent yeah. is. Um, so this is where the whiteboard blows up and kind of trying to convince my athletes you need to push beyond your limits. Don't worry about finishing the reps. Fail. Push yourself to failure. It's right. okay to fail. Yeah, because fa through failure, we get what? We, we get success. We get gains. Yeah, we get gains, bro. <laughs> Not to drop the, uh, the topic of this podcast. But yeah, so Mo and I, it was late, um, and we were going through the whiteboard, and we wanted to really kind of figure out how much weight w were people really giving up. And by, by not adding on five an extra pounds. five pounds. Five pounds. We're talking two and a half on each side, right? That's nothing. That's that baby weight. Yeah. But the also can be a make or break. Well, in terms of volume. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we can put a five pound on and fail it, right? Absolutely. Right? It's, it's crazy. It's only five pounds. We pick those little two and a half up yeah. all the time and like- Don't think anything about it. No, but when you add it on the top of you know, a previous max, mm-hmm. it's legit, right? For a training cycle. For a training cycle. So uh, through the first week, if you have just a five pound PR, um, which we'll just keep referencing to- because <laughs> it's only five it's only pounds. five pounds yeah. guys um just through your first week the the strength cycle that we run that one day you lift 140 more pounds mm-hmm. if you have a five pound mm-hmm. if you have a 10 pound you're 280 and a 15 pound 420 more pounds in one day just one day. one day right so five pounds equals to 140 pounds moved over those four lifts that are four sets that we do mm-hmm. 140 pounds in reference is not that big of a deal. But, no, not in of itself. Right. If it was just one day. But when we look at a whole strength cycle, so we have an eight week cycle here and we add that up, um, you know, week two, we were at uh, plus 170. Uh, but this is all compounded. Yes. In so, addition to that first week. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we've already lifted 140 more pounds mm-hmm. the first week. We're lifting another 170 pounds on week two. And then week three, we're plus 180 just for that that strength day, right? So if we add those three together, that's 500 pounds over three weeks, roughly. Okay. Right. That's, that's pretty legitimate, right? 500 yeah. pounds. You can't even back squat that, but you just did, <laughs> right? Yeah. You can't. Most normal human beings don't back, back squat, squat 500, 500 pounds. pounds. Yeah. Right. But you just did over three weeks. You added 500 pounds more load to your system over three weeks. But if we take that now and we go over an entire cycle of, you know, eight weeks, we're roughly at 1,200 pounds just for five pounds, mm-hmm. right? We're at 2,400 pounds if we add 10 pounds, Yeah, which is a lot more. What's that equate to? Another PR. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because now our system has now moved a, a copious amount of weight over a longer period of time. Our system is now, uh, we just talked about with Eric, if you do your percentage work right and you do it at a, a gradual pace and you... Uh, gradual stages Mm -hmm. and you continue to build your strength over a broader period of time Mm -hmm. in the end you become more stable you can move better and you can move more weight and that's what we that's what we're talking about like shut up (laughs) seriously shut up why why are you mad why would you be mad i wouldn't be mad i'd be dude i'm happy with the five pound pr and and even and before we threw those numbers up there like for me i'd always you know i for me it's okay to fail and that's another uh thing we have written down you know like I said, my frustration was with my athletes completing those uh, prescribed set of reps in that last, you know, overloaded uh, set. Mm-hmm. And that's not what it's designed for. It's designed for you to put, you know, try and push to those limits to test yourself and, and, and in theory fail, you know, and, but you're telling me you got all those, then something's wrong. You know, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. Failure. We've talked about, you learn more from failing than you do from not failing. Mm-hmm. And that's just the reality. The, the more you fail, the more you're going to learn, the more success you're going to have on anything. Because mm-hmm. you talk to any business person, you talk to anybody that has failed a lot in their life, they're going to talk more about their failures and their successes. Their successes yeah. But all you see is their successes, mm-hmm. right? Uh, when people are training and they're grinding it out, okay, you don't see that. But no. what, what do you see? You see them standing on the podium somewhere. Mm-hmm. Do you think they just flopped on the podium? Yeah, just no. rolled up, yeah. No. Uh, they put in some work. Now they're on the podium, and it's probably because they weren't pissed off about their little five pound PR they had. They cherished the five pound, mm-hmm. went to work for another seven weeks, and then they hit another five pound. So now over two cycles, they moved more pounds than they would have if they did not hit those back to back five pound PRs. Mm-hmm. Now you couple that with a year's worth of work. Mm-hmm. Now you're moving thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds over one year period. You want your gains to go up? Cherish your five pound PRs. Yeah. Understand that if you do fail your your max lift, like they were t- Mo was talking about, mm-hmm. it's okay to fail it, right? And I would rather see someone fail physically than than not load that five pounds on and just kind of. I'm not saying give up, but mm-hmm. just for the sake of completing those five reps, right? And that, that's ridiculous. Like you can do that, but you're really selling yourself short. Yeah, and that's if that's how you want to be. We can't control that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll control that because I don't let that happen here because. I will challenge my athletes. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality of it. I will tell them, look, man, you have more in the tank. We're mm-hmm. putting another five pounds on. But they, they believe that when I do this, that they know that I'm not going to ask them to try anything that's going to put them in danger that they possibly can't do. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of if they can mentally accept them at being able to do it, mm-hmm. right? 
I can see that they came out of the hole like a rocket ship, mm-hmm. but to them, they felt like they were coming out of it like a snail. Mm-hmm. Okay, because our brain will confuse us. Yeah. It, it really it feels different. And I've had some of my easy, my hardest lifts to me tell me it was my and very like dude, it looked you easy. Got that easy. Yeah, you, dude, you came flying out of the I'm hole. I'm like, bro, I about passed out. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I about crapped my pants. So to fail is okay. I think you, if you're going to fail, fail properly. Don't mm-hmm. don't do it in, in compromise. Unsafely, posi- yeah, yeah, position and stuff like that. But yeah, if you fail, dude, that's okay. You will learn and you will adjust. And you're going to find your weakness that you have, mm-hmm. and then you're going to be able to address it. And I, you know, for me, you know, mentally, making myself fail, uh, it gives me an opportunity to work on something for the next time, for that next training cycle. Because now I know what I could not do versus guessing what I couldn't do. We talked about this uh, when to compete, yeah. right? We talked about this. Uh, one of the reasons why you should compete is so you go there and you fail. Mm-hmm. You know, when your first competition, you're not going to go to win it. You're a skilled athlete. Mm-hmm. You want to win it, but you, it's your first competition. You're most likely not set up unless you have this. Your, unless you're some sort of freak, which it happens sometimes. Unless you're some sort of freak that ha, should be doing RX and wants to do scaled, mm-hmm. whatever. You're going to fail. And through those failures, what happens is you come back to the gym, you learn what you sucked at there mm-hmm. that we failed at, and then you get to attack it differently. Did you suck at the salt bike? Okay. Well, let's get some cows in, right? Mm-hmm. Let's let's accumulate 50 cows over a broad time, and then let's take the 60, then 80, then 100, then 200. Mm-hmm. Keep building that up. Find out what you suck at and yeah. keep doing it over and over again. That way, when you go to the next competition, that element, you don't suck at it. But guess what? You're going to find out something else you suck at. Yep. You'll then, always, yeah, CrossFit will always help you find something you suck because at. Because even if you go and win a competition, okay, and we've had really good success in this competition season as a gym, which is awesome to see across the board, everybody's going to leave there feeling they could have improved on something else. They could have done better there. They could have been more efficient here. They could have been faster there. She, you could have cycle the barbell differently you could have split it up differently you're going to learn something about yourself you're going to learn something about what you did no matter if you took first on the podium or not you'll still have stuff that you're going to learn just as much as someone who's going yeah, and i'm sure matt fraser and rich froning will tell you the same thing that there's something they could have done better said, matt fraser said it yep. he said it i think it was two years yep. ago he was on the the stadium floor and he was just thanking to himself um, about how he was going to improve on what he sucked at for this next is, year. He just won. Yeah, he just won the game. He, he just been identified as the fittest human on the planet. And the first thing he thought about was how much he needs to work on this next element year. because he found a hole in his game. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, that's just that should tell you something. The fittest in the world in CrossFit. That's the first thing you think, and that's what I'm not saying you have to be an elite competitor, or the, the top one percent. Everybody should think that way, mm-hmm. right? Because if you truly want to become more fit and you want to become better and you want to get stronger, it doesn't just happen. No. you got to put in the work, right? And the proper work. The proper work and safe work, which brings me to my next point. You know, so you do those max out weeks, you know, and you leave some of that weight on the floor. But when you're doing your training cycles, yeah, load appropriately, load mm-hmm. safely. Don't load to the point just so you can get those numbers. Load to the point where you can get the appropriate safe training. You know, I, I see something like we're talking about someone doing a squat and all of a sudden their knees are touching, mm-hmm. you know, that's okay. You might be able to move that weight, but that was not a safe lift. Okay. No. We got to do something to make sure that you stabilize your knees, you're able to drive out, you know, making sure your mechanics are proper. So don't get that twisted guys. I mean, I know there's a fine line between what we're saying here, but they're safe loading, practice safe loading. Yeah. I mean, it's, it all, it should always be technique position before load. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because once technique and or position improve, your load will dramatically improve. I mean, we're going off. Um, it's going to be a great example. I can't wait to see the numbers. I love numbers. You all know that. We're wrapping up another cycle of our uh, block work for our clean and snatch. We have not taken a clean and a percentage-based off the floor or a snatch off the floor percentage-based mm-hmm. doing percentage work these last seven weeks Mm -hmm. we've been doing nothing but block work percentage power positions alone with that proper position and proper technique they're going to pr their snatch and clean now i'm not saying we haven't done full cleans and we haven't done full snatches but a dedicated percentage straight based like we would do for a strength building Mm -hmm. we haven't done that now we'd have incorporated them into the workouts but not at a not at the 
steady basis of what percentage work does for mm-hmm. you to load your system. So just through their technique and through their um, work off the blocks, they're going to PR. Mm-hmm. And it may not feel like you're going to. They're like, oh, we need percentage work. I got you. Yeah. We're fine. Technique will get you that PR, I promise you. Absolutely. Yeah. So another issue sometimes we both see respectively when we talk about doing the strength-based training is when one of your athletes says, oh, I got a 25-pound PR. Okay. Something's wrong. Either your numbers are really bad. Unless they're a new athlete. Or unless they're new. Okay, yeah, you got those beginner gains. But when we have our our athletes that kind of come routinely and you see these exponential gains, like, you know, exceeding 10 pounds, you're like, okay, something's wrong. When's the last time you maxed it? Yeah, when's the last time you maxed it? (laughs) You know, know, did you, were you here the last time we did this? Yeah. Um, Were you sandbagging? (laughs) (laughs) Were you just trying to complete the the prescribed number of reps? You know, there's lots of things that come into play. And you got to be honest with yourself, you know. Again, getting in the gym is the hardest part, but then once you're here, why are you here? Don't don't undercut don't undercut your your um your one rep max that day just so you can PR the following cycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I'm at fifteen plus right now. I know I got at least 10 more pounds in, but I also know that that strength cycle at 25 pounds plus is going to be horrible. Yeah. So, and I want to make sure I PR next time. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just called a day. <laughs> I'm going to fake this failed lift. I'm going to grunt like I'm like dying and I'm just going to drop the bar and say, I got it. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. God, tell you what, I know my people really well and they know, I know when, I know, and they know, because we make eye contact. And they look away. <laughs> Just like somebody with their Apple Watch. Bro, yeah. <laughs> Chopping hands off, one hand at a time. Uh, but it will be in a workout, and let's say there, there is a percentage base that they're going off of, and I'm looking, I'm like, I have 15 people, 14 of them are struggling with this portion, and this person's smiling. Yeah. All right. Something's off. Something's off. I like. Yeah. I'm no detective, Mo, <laughs> but I see <laughs> patterns, and her pattern or his pattern yeah. is telling me they're underloaded. Yeah. And at that point in time, I'm not joking. It's like we're we're telekinetic. Yeah. I'm thinking it, and they look right at me. I'm yeah. like, I oh, got you, Mo. Oh, either that, or they avoid looking at you. <laughs> and for those of you out there listening, your coaches know when you're underloading. Yeah, because uh, like I said, you know, I coach a specific class on specific days, and I'm pretty pretty intimate with my athletes and. They know that I'll walk up and throw an extra, some extra change plates on there when I see them underloading their bar. And you know what? None of them have died. No. And that, that's a good coach. You need, to be, you need to be put in a proper load so you get the stimulus. So you, in, in all actuality, you get stronger, mm-hmm. which is cool. I mean, you know, we kind of grabbed this topic out of a straight frustration, mm-hmm. and I was de- definitely able to piggyback on it. And I guess we can sum it all up by just saying, look, five pounds is five pounds. Mm-hmm. Okay, five pounds. Now you n- understand what five pounds yeah. can equate to. Now our our reps are going to be different than what strength strength cycles you may run. Mm-hmm. But regardless, if it's a five by five, that's twenty five pounds that you're gaining every single day that mm-hmm. you're not that you wouldn't have lifted. Mm-hmm. Now you put that over seven weeks, or uh, say your five by five typically would be a nine week pa- or, uh, cycle. So mm-hmm. you put that over nine weeks, so twenty five pounds a week for nine weeks. You do the math. That's how many more hundreds of pounds you're going to move. Mm-hmm. If you wouldn't have hit the five pounder, then you wouldn't have moved that weight, right? Yep. It, so be happy that, and you're giving yourself opportunity to train on your stability. You know, like we talked about in the PT episode. You know, just getting comfortable with moving heavier loads. You know, right. or or doing more volume. You know, it's you're doing yourself a favor by by allowing yourself to fail and knowing where your boundaries are. You you find out where your boundaries are, and then you can attack the weaknesses, mm-hmm. so you no longer have that boundary. Yeah. Then you can take it to the next level. Yep. I mean, it's just the way it is. But be happy with what you achieve. Stop moping around because you only got a five pound and they got a twenty five pound. Yeah. You need to congratulate them just as much as you because yep. that's that's monumental for them. And then I, what I like to say is like, you're screwed next cycle, bro. Yeah. Like, and they're already know like, <laughs> oh my god, like this cycle sucks. I can't yeah. imagine adding twenty five pounds it, to that. Yep. And again, you know, yes, the, there might be a hundred athletes at your gym, but your coaches know what you're doing. 
Yeah. We do. Trust me. It's like, you know, when your parents always caught you sneaking and sneaking cookies <laughs> out of the cookie jar. Yeah. That's how that's how coaches are or as well. Or Reese's cups. Or Reese's cups. <laughs> Okay, so again, this week's call to action. Send us a video clip, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or go ahead and DM us asking us, or sorry, telling us what you guys want to see uh, in future shows. Um, you know if you're a, a listener that you guys are the ones that generate about 90% of our content, and we enjoy hearing from you and getting episodes together that answer the questions that you guys have. Because otherwise, we're just a couple dudes drinking. Well, we're not drinking beer right now, but normally we are. Today, we had some lovely coffee from Warehouse Warehouse 4. That's like 33 in a row. (laughs) Hashtag unbanned Jenna. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And as always, though, we really appreciate you guys listening, subscribing, clicking like, and share. And I think this brings this week's episode to a close. I am Mo, and I'm out. See you. Thank you for listening to the One More Rip Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at One More Rip Podcast or on Twitter at Can I Get One More or shoot us an email at Can I Get One More at gmail.com. Dude, I would <laughs> murder Reese Couch right now. I actually thought about bringing you some. Well, dude, we should have done that as a pick. Fuck. I got a message from Cody Wilson today. He says, I'm listening to your podcast. Am I the one who leaves the trail of Reese Cups for you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes. I said, yes, you're definitely one of them. I take it just as I've told him. I was like, I, most of the time he does it. Just a people, fucker. Yeah. Just for people like me. I think he loves to stir the shit up because <laughs> he lives in controversy. But I think some of his, obviously we don't line up. So I just take it as that. Yeah. Like, just talk. And it's cool. Him. Yeah. I'll still have a beer with him, you know? Yeah, shit. Some people just love to start shit. And yeah. Shit. Kick the hornet's nest and fucking yep. run away. Yep, that's what happens. <laughs> that's exactly what happens. Hey, Brody, he, check out all these Reese's. Big fucking bar here. <laughs> 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 Damn it, I got stung again. Again, yeah. <laughs>